actually, this is a very, very common question I have been getting on tokenmetrics. So let me see if I can if I can even answer that here. So apologies, let me just kind of uh, go off tangent real quick. So people are asking, why do our price predictions always change? Right? Because sometimes people think it's, it's cheating. Right? And it may seem like it, but once you hear why, it makes t total sense, right? So we have rolling 30-day price predictions, right? So this, this means that whenever you log in, we want to give you the most accurate price prediction, right? It's because crypto is very volatile and trying to predict cryptocurrencies is, is, is basically a crazy thing to do, right? However, we like crazy, right? So when you log in, so for example, if, you, if we go to a cryptocurrency, we'll cover, um, so for example, let's go to Ethereum, right? So if, the best example to really kind of show this is go back to Black Thursday in March, where the crypto market essentially tanked. Prices crashed 30%, 40%. Imagine having price predictions when that happens. Do you want to have those now outdated price predictions or do you want the models to update and give you a new price prediction with that new data? Right? So as a result, the price predictions have to be constantly updated. So we update, we update them daily, probably even more. I would say anywhere, anywhere between 6 to, 20, to 24 hours a day. Right? So meaning that, for example, right now, this is the price prediction for Ethereum. So our models believe that Ether could go as low as 373 before beginning to rise and go all the way back to about 396. Right? But let's say after one week from now, there's a huge crash, right? There's a huge meltdown or there's a huge melt up in crypto, right? Let's say the entire crypto market goes up or down 20%. So what we want to do when you log in a week later, we want to factor all that prior week worth of data into the prediction and give you a more recent, more accurate price prediction. So as a result, we're constantly taking new data and adding that into the price prediction. So the price prediction looks only purely at past, past price data. It looks purely at the charts. It does not factor in fundamentals, technology, technical an analysis. It looks, it's looking just purely at the charts, at the past historical pricing. Then the machine learning tries to predict where the price is going in the next 30 days. So meaning that after one week, we take that new seven days worth of data, add it to the historical pricing and redo the models. So as a result, that's why it's constantly updating, right? So we have tried to explain it here, right? We have a tutorial and we also have uh, FAQs and some text explaining it, but we understand not everybody has the time to go through and read that. So that's why we're also doing this video here. But yeah, I, I think once you understand that, it will make total sense because Bitcoin or something, when something major happens, when a black swan event happens, you want to have the most recent, most accurate pricing predictions because at that point, that's what matters the most. Uh, Bill, uh, any any comments on that? Sure. Okay, so as we know, uh, I read charts and I try to help you. And the good news is, is that our artificial intelligence models look at those same charts. So it's like I've got a whole fleet of colleagues, except they're in the digital world. But the key thing to remember is the AI is reading the charts. They're looking at the same thing you are. So as the charts change, just like my read can change, so can the AI's read, right? That's why price predictions, you know, <clears throat> price prediction sounds, you know, it's, an, it's the ultimate great title for it, but it doesn't necessarily mean crystal ball. Sometimes it acts like it with its accuracy, but basically the humans and the computers were all reading a dynamic chart. Yeah. Yeah, well said, Bill. And one thing to add on to that. So when we say price predictions, yes, we understand it's it's kind of like magic <laughs> in a way, right? We're trying to predict the future. However, one thing to note, when using the price predictions to trade, whether it's short term, long term, right? So for example, if you if you plan to trade them monthly, that does not mean look at the price prediction one day, make your trade go on vacation on your yacht and come back a month later. No, <laughs> it means, okay, that's where we think the price is going. However, please keep an eye on it in case there are any major shifts in the market. 
And because if something happens, let's say the SEC comes out and says all DeFi are, are is illegal, I mean, guess what? The price prediction models will factor that in because there'll be lots of price ac action in the markets, probably a large crash. So being able to factor that in. So when you trade with the price predictions, keep an eye on it. Right. So this is something we, we do plan to launch. Hopefully, I would say by, by next month, we want to add alerts. So being able to make trades on price predictions and have it give you an alert when there's a major change. So whether it goes up or down and also same thing with the indices, being able to give you alerts when a particular index is going to rebalance or update and then also giving you alerts when cryptocurrencies you follow in your portfolio change based on the ratings. So we, so because this is something we think is definitely required, this is something our customer, our crypto family has been asking us to do. And we do plan to make this available to the investor plan and to the professional plan. So if you're in the investor plan, the plan is we'll have email alerts. And if you're in the professional plan, we'll have texting alerts, right? So being able to send you real-time updates and, alert, and, and, and alerts when the price prediction change, for example, right? So once again, just to recap, price prediction models and indices, when we say use them to trade, it does not mean make a trade, walk away, come back a month later and and think everything is going to be on the bullseye, right? You, already, you constantly have to be checking on it. I would say probably check into it every few days just to see how things are, just, just to see if there are any major updates, right? For example, recently with gold, right? Actually, let me see if I can pull up the gold price predictions because there was one people were asking me about uh, via the chat. So we use PAX Gold as the best way to kind of see how gold has been performing because PAX Gold or PAX G is a cryptocurrency that's pegged to gold with a one-to-one -one ratio. Right, so I mean, this this price prediction has been pretty, pretty crazy, pretty crazy, right? So it was, it's been pretty aligned, and we had gold basically going all the way till two thousand or so. Then we had gold dipping all the way as low as sixteen hundred, right? Basically, it was basically basically telling you gold has gone up a lot, take some profits. It's probably it's probably going to have a correction. Gold did have a correction. It went to 2000, came back all the way down to only about 1950. So it wasn't that big of a correction, right? And our models had it going as low as 1600, which was very, very low. Actually, it had gold losing 22%, which is the lowest. I mean, the lowest gold has ever lost is about 14% historically, right? So it was basically something that was pretty drastic. Right. However, the, after some time, the models did adapt. They I would say they typically take a few days to adapt. Right. Uh, and now they've kind of corrected it. And now they have gold basically bouncing back, going all the way to, to up to 2,500. And speaking of gold, I mean, Warren Buffett investing in a gold company. Right. The Oracle of Omaha is now getting into gold. Right. And our, our models are basically saying they're bullish on gold, which I think is also a bullish sign for crypto. Right. So just to kind of show you, right, don't just look at the price predictions and walk away and come back a month later. Right. Because, for example, looking at this, this says gold is going to twenty five hundred. As mentioned, keep an eye on it. Right. Come back two days later, three days later. Keep checking on it to see if there are any drastic changes, because the models could self-correct and say, OK, you know what? Something has happened now with this new data and we think it's only going to twenty three hundred. We think it's going even higher. Right. So kind of like a trade. Don't because um, right now we, we don't really have uh, alerts or stop losses with price predictions, so you kind of have to keep an eye on the trade. Um, anything to add to that, Bill, in terms of even maybe gold and what's happening with gold? Sure. So, gold is frequently viewed as kind of a no brainer in this environment, right? <clears throat> Fed's printing a lot of money, buy gold. Okay, I have a different take on gold. Gold is a part of an alternative money revolution. Gold one day could become collateral, right? You'll take your gold to a central depository for say the state of Texas and they'll give you a checkbook and you'll be able to write checks for dollars against your gold. Now, crypto is way ahead of the game, of course, right? And ETH is collateral, say for like the DeFi system. 
And so are all these other big cryptos. So gold is a revolution in money. It's a revolution in collateral. And of course, crypto is also going in that same direction. So gone are the days of the gold guys looking down on crypto. I never thought they should have been there to begin with. We're all in the same boat and we're all going in the same direction. All right. Thank you, Bill. All right. So tell us what you think down in the comments below.